signalé tout. Mais tu sais quoi, t'as dit de à boire. Hey guys, welcome back to my page. Thank you for being here today. As you can see, I'm here with Adam and we are going to be answering some of your guys' questions that you submitted through Instagram. Yeah, I'm really excited to answer these questions. And um, I did want my wife to give me a heads up and show me them and she quickly did, but I uh, feel like I, I, I'm kind of like on the fence. I want to digest these questions and come up with an answer. And I also want to just like answer them on the spot. So mm -hmm. probably today I'm going to do more of answering on the spot. But if I feel like that I have a passage to share or something a bit more deep, and then I'll, I'll, I'll quickly find the information and uh, share it with you. Okay, so first question we're going to answer is what is something you look back and can say really helped you to be prepared for marriage? I think something that helped me to prepare for marriage was working on myself and not in a way that's like self-development or in a critical way where we're analyzing ourselves but I just kind of allowed the Lord to bring up different things that I had to work on before I got married. For me it's um, it's you know it's it's simple yet so hard and it's to allow the Lord to change you. Like my lifestyle pre-Christian is a lot of party and a lot of drinking and a lot of silly stuff right and everyone knows the stories of what we do and we're in the world right but um it's really the lord as he takes hold of the heart and then he transforms the heart now it could be a process right but think of it as this like it's like the soil he, he plants and it needs to grow and it takes time and in that it needs patience and trust in the lord but he he changed my heart because he changed me it does sound as i'm saying it, it sounds so simple but it actually it's actually it's actually quite hard to um to allow the Lord in because you have to die to yourself and like what does that mean now like you might ask but it means like in every area of, of, of self every area of sin that you have to give that to the Lord and he's so good like there's that meme everyone seems right and it's like a little girl with a teddy bear and she's like she doesn't want to give it to the Lord but the Lord has a bigger teddy bear behind his back that he's going to give to her mm -hmm. and it's just something like that like he wants us to give up this mundane small worthless stuff because he has something in return i would also add to it as well is also thinking about not not thinking about it in just a way that's like our own desires of like oh i want marriage because mm. i want to be with someone and it's all about us um, but actually changing your perspective to see like the Lord actually has someone for you so he can bring you together with that person for kingdom purposes and what you're going to accomplish together. So there's like a bigger picture to it all. I'm just giving you guys some practical steps as well. I, I took courses, I took this, and this is just however you feel led to. Um, I took a course called the Single and Empowered Course by Alison Rowe. I don't know if that is still going on. Um, I also took another course that was called like the Wife Academy. <laughs> and. I will, if they still are running, I'll list them below. Um, just be open to learning, reading books, listening to podcasts on relationships. I listen to lots of sermons on relationships. What has been your favorite thing about marriage so far? Okay, so I'll start with this one. So um, prior to being married, I was uh, single for a while. And so I'd work, I'm a soccer coach uh, by my trade. And um, so we have all different hours, but in, in the season we might come home late. So I come home late and like, there's nobody there. I come into my, my place and it's empty. And me, I'm, I'm a social being, like I want conversation. I want someone to say, hey, how are you? Put your arms around me. But that doesn't mean it was the time I had in my singleness was 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 bad. It was, it was good. If it wasn't for them years of singleness and um, learning and spending time with the Lord. And there was so much goodness in singleness as well, right? And also seeing how the Lord can use us together. It's like everything I did before on my own, it's it's better together. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy in the beginning, but it eventually is better together, like making videos together or even just being able to cook together or minister to other people. Yeah, like okay. I'm, my mindset is more on like ministry, like how <laughs> my, my mind's on food and yeah. so like cook together. No ministry. I'm okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like more like ministry, like how yeah. the Lord can use us in situations where if there's like a male and a female and we're going to go meet up with them and like yeah. minister to them. It's like Adam, Adam can speak to the yeah. man in a way that maybe I couldn't and vice versa. So yeah, I would, mm, I good. would say that like the way the Lord can use us that's for good. ministry. That's a really good answer. Okay. Next question. What's the most difficult part about a new marriage? 
so we've been married for eight months this month so it's still pretty new so I would say that probably it's the fact that I've said this in videos before the fact that you think you've dealt with a lot of things but then you get together and all the stuff starts coming out that you didn't know was there and to some degree I do believe it it will happen to everyone to some degree not not to scare you or anything a lot of marital issues are individual issues which is something my parents always say and mm -hmm. it's like you think it's your partner or they think it's you but it's actually something that we haven't dealt with so I would say kind of the shock of like wow this is still an insecurity of mine or this is still an issue that I have mm -hmm. not properly dealt with I thought wasn't there but then you get into a relationship it, it comes back out so I would say mm -hmm. that and the second thing I would say is also um, getting to getting like a routine together probably like basically learning how to how to flow and like work together in a way that is beneficial for both of you if that makes sense mm -hmm. what are some important questions to ask when dating yeah that's a good one um, first of all red flags like if you see red flags they're not there to um, Bypass, yeah, they're there to be answered and if you can't answer you have to say no like again uh, I always this is my belief. I don't know if it's for everyone, but I always believe the, uh, That Satan will bring a counterfeit uh, of the person you're meant to marry into your life before the God allows the person you're gonna marry come into your life. That's what I believe is it for everyone I don't know so what I would suggest is if red flags is don't put them under the rug like answer them does that person love the lord jesus are they sold out for christ i think a question that would be good is asking the person what are their top priorities of things that are most important to them in life yeah and then obviously you would expect that jesus would be the number one and i think also asking like what are their convictions or have mm. they have, this might sound weird but have they worked on, like have they had inner healing? Have they yeah. broken soul ties? Have they worked on things? Actually, I just remembered a book that I will link below mm -hmm. and we actually worked through that book together and they're just like straight to the point. Yeah. So that's, I would say that's probably the best answer is read this book and if the person is open to yeah. answering the questions with you. Any advice for a newer Christian married to a non-believer aside from prayer? Okay, that is a great question. Um, we all we find ourselves in different uh, religion households. I grew up in one. Uh, my mom was a different religion to my mom. Your dad. <laughs> my mom was a different religion <laughs> to my mom. <laughs> my mom was a different religion to my dad, right? So <laughs> why are you laughing at my dad? <laughs> but I've got four things um, that will help you in, in a situation like, situation like this. Um, number one, like, don't give up on them. Like, we, all were, we were all once non-believers right and God knew that you know he, he he values marriage so so highly so if you're living in a, in a good marriage in a sense that, that they treat you good they're looking after you um, these are the tips that I would suggest that you could use right and number one is promote peace so like be a peacemaker in every situation uh, promote peace um, so if you're in a you're out and about and you've got the kids in the car and um, you know someone cuts you up and your husband or your wife is getting frustrated like <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> cuts you off please cut you up cut you up with a <laughs> cut you up with That's a butter knife really fine <laughs> <laughs> keep smiling <laughs> smile no okay um in that situation um it's like sh show your spouse uh how peaceful you are and like and obviously you have to draw onto the lord to become that you can't be like oh i'm gonna act peace but inside it's like you're ready to knock someone out like that's not gonna work you have to ask the lord for his peace right because his peace transcends all understanding i would say um first of all like that's really really difficult and i understand it's it's probably really disheartening when you're waiting and you're not seeing any fruit or you're praying and you're not seeing any fruit um first thing i wanted to say is that definitely don't underestimate the power of prayer like just being steadfast and praying because the lord is working behind the scenes in that person's heart and in their lives so it might not be apparent right now or even in the near future it may take a long time but i would say just being steadfast in praying but i would say similar to what adam was saying about promoting peace is be an example and just 
I feel like it's, it's just so, so, so important to really walk in your own faith and show your spouse the, basically like the fruit of the spirit that you have from being a Christian because then that's also going to attract them to see like wow you're different and you know you're a light or you're able to have peace in a situation mm -hmm. that other people wouldn't have peace so definitely just like practicing the fruit of the spirit and I also just wanted to read the scripture as well that's first Peter 3 verse 1 and it says wives in the same way submit yourselves to your own husbands so that if any of them do not believe the word they may be won over without words but by the behavior of their wives so i feel like that's just kind of saying again leading leading by example and with that i would just say being patient and really really praying for patience and um try to not like understand that when you see that person like they're not believing or it's not getting any better in fact it looks like it's getting worse just kind of practice like um, really bringing that to the lord and bringing that pain and that struggle to the lord but not allowing it to to make you like lash out on the person mm -hmm. um, or be harsh on them so just knowing you can just keep getting that comfort and that reassurance and that affirmation mm -hmm. from the lord how do i move on from someone and is soul ties a thing so I know we both agree that soul ties is definitely a thing. Mm -hmm. Spiritual world is way more um, alive than mm -hmm. physical world and, and not just a physical relationship like sexual, but it can be even be like a really intimate relationship where you're just really close to the person. Ways that you can break the soul ties is there's lots of prayers online. You can do like a YouTube video prayer, Google a prayer. You can go to see, um, have like a personal ministry appointment like a, Christian counseling or something like that to kind of get deliverance and break those soul ties mm -hmm. and I think um, that's one of the biggest things of preventing people from moving on is having those soul ties um, but I think we both are kind of on the same page too with like not having communication with the person anymore um, even if it's through means of like social media like or even certain like items I feel like it's just good to really like cleanse that whole like past and everything honestly sometimes i've heard people say before too that like they won't sometimes they'll be really close to the family and they'll still like stay close with the family and yeah. then that will affect their current relationship or it will even prevent them from being to be able to move on in the first place so yeah old, yeah. old ties need to be severed yeah old ties spiritual ties physical ties mental ties uh group uh, hangouts like mm -hmm. everything it's got to be a clean cut yeah for me anyway yeah i agree i mean there are people that have that i know or i've heard that will say oh you know i can still have this person in my life yeah. and i mean i don't know for I me i don't believe it i don't i would no. say no I, um, I don't believe that for me yeah yeah <laughs> we're like that's our answer <laughs> yeah. do you want to answer that no <laughs> okay um all right i'll answer this one okay in the waiting time for your husband was it difficult for you so i think i've made a whole video about singleness and waiting so i'm just going to try to recap this but it was difficult and it wasn't difficult basically i was really enjoying my time with the lord and um i was just you know doing everything on my own i was really enjoying it and then i felt that the lord show he put the desire of marriage in my heart because prior to that, I wasn't 100% sure because I had never seen, no, that's not true, I had not ever seen, but I hadn't experienced um, a faith, like a God, a godly relationship. So for me, I was like, well, I don't want to be married if I'm not gonna be married to someone who is chasing the Lord like I am because otherwise that's gonna stop me from wanting to further the kingdom, etc. So I felt that the Lord then put it on my heart that I do wanna be married, I just want to be in have a kingdom marriage basically mm -hmm. and when he put that desire on my heart then it started to become an idol for me for a couple of months and I started obsessing over it and that's when it was difficult for me because I'm like who is this person where are they do I know them where do they live and I started obsessing over it and that was where it was difficult for me and then I felt the Lord really show me you need to lay this down and you need to give this to me because now this has become an idol and so I did that and that was in September of 2019 and I just felt this prompting this impression from the Lord that's like go into the fall the winter the spring and really like focus on bettering myself like not in a self-development way but in a way that's like my relationship with the Lord and just you know working on all different areas and then kind of revisit it after that and so yeah I would say 
Um, it was, there were, there was times when it was difficult, but when it became difficult for me, I would lay it, lay it down and give it to the Lord again and just change what my focus was, which was like, I'm just going to focus on um, becoming the person um, that my husband would be looking for. And yeah, that's, that's my answer. Good answer, honey. I love your wedding video on YouTube. Thank you. Do you recommend a list of prayers for our future husband? So yes, I do. There's a book called 31 Prayers for My Future Husband or Your Future Husband. But anyways, 31 Prayers, I will put it up here and link it below. And there's also one for future wife. So highly, highly recommend that. And also um, Adam and I, even when we started dating and we knew we were gonna get married, we actually started reading a page of the book every day to each other. We would send via WhatsApp the prayer and we would pray it over each other um, for 30 days up until like, I think I, yeah. So um, before meeting your spouse and I find it even nice to, yeah. yeah. Just sowing prayer into your into your relationship, into your marriage before you, you get there is always a, a good way to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you divide your time as a Christian and then having to be a wife or husband to your partner? And I would say that it comes with practice and trial and error. And in the beginning of our relationship, I think that we had to try to figure out like how to have our alone time or how to have our walk mm -hmm. with the Lord, but still spend time. Well, of course, we're going to be spending time with each other. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a bit sometimes personality based as well, because I'm the type of person who I really like to have my alone time with the Lord. And, mm -hmm. and Adam does too, but I feel like he can, you can get into the presence of the Lord, like kind of like faster, even if it's in front of me. Mm -hmm. So like I'll look and Adam will be like, on the floor like praying and for me sometimes it's hard for me to do that and feel authentic because I feel like oh I have to be totally by myself um, which doesn't work when you live with someone and you're in close quarters so I think it kind of came with like practice and even like we do spend time we do spend our time together like we have our our quiet time together sometimes but I think just knowing that like it's not rude to have to go into the other room. Mm -hmm. um, Adam will go and like shut the door and do his thing, mm -hmm. and um, and I will lock myself in the room or something and but do which my we, thing. We kind of prefer doing our. We don't really do us. We don't really spend any time with the Lord together. We used to in the beginning, yeah. like. Didn't didn't like it. <laughs> we used to in the beginning like we would spend time in the beginning yeah, we just felt that because we were a married couple we need to come to the lord together and then i've, I've got a different time schedule she's got a different time schedule mm -hmm. and i felt this was it was it wasn't the best way for us to do it like mm -hmm. i liked for us to to have our still our one-on-one -on -one time with the lord because yeah. that's who i want the relationship with is with the lord and i want that for her too and mm -hmm. sure we can watch sermons together we can worship together and we pray we pray and together, we pray together. I, yeah we do worship together. so we but when it comes to intimate um one-on-one -on -one time i i suggest doing it still by yourself but again on top of that worship prayer uh, fast together like all these things you can do corporately together but when you just want alone time mm -hmm. just go shut the door um and just have one-on-one -on -one time with the lord I, I i think that's better for us because there's no pressure on me like oh if i'm tired at the moment she wants to share spend time with the lord like no like yeah and for everyone like it, it could be different but that's like adam was saying that's what works that's what we found works for us so yeah. i would say definitely be patient if you're newly married and you're feeling like oh this isn't working yeah. um you just have to be patient and you have to kind of trials trial and error and again like not feeling bad because i will feel bad like oh i'm so rude i shut the door or like i'm sneaking out of the bed in the morning to go and like read because i feel like i need to be alone with the lord or maybe mm -hmm. adam feels that way too but i think there's no. shouldn't be <laughs> okay i was gonna say probably not but just gave you the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. um but yeah i think it it depends i feel guilty very easily and i never want to offend people so i feel like oh, i'm being so rude when obviously you're not thinking that so yeah no. trial and error okay um how much effort or interest should a girl put or show in a guy if he's the one to pursue her. What I personally think is like sometimes there's 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 actually um, I should have studied this. There's a book in the there's a story in the Bible about Ruth and Boaz and it was basically about like um, who made like the first move type of thing. Basically I need to brush up on that story so I don't want to say exactly what happened but I do remember hearing a teaching on it and basically saying that there was still like 
an initial move that Ruth had to mm -hmm. make to show that she was interested. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I mean, I don't think we have to be totally complacent. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not going to do anything at all. I think we do have to show that we're interested, yeah. but there's a difference between showing interest and reciprocating that mm -hmm. um, versus like heavily pursuing. This is my red flag. If they are not pursuing you back, then it's a no. Like full stop. I've seen too many times where the girl is interested in the guy or the guy is interested in the girl and the other person's just like, not like, like maybe, like um, let me think about this, like that kind of attitude. That is a no. If God has ordained this marriage, he would have spoke to both of you, hopefully, and then both of you should be running to each other because you guys are a gift. You're a gift and it's a prize. For me, I, I need to see pursuit from both of you because you pursued me as well as I pursued you. Yeah, I was gonna give that example. Why don't um, we give that example? Okay. Can I share? I definitely showed interest mm -hmm. in him and I did make a step by telling him, hey, just so you know, I don't like text guys. I don't talk to guys. I don't text guys, but I feel mm -hmm. led to be speaking to you. So that's how yeah. that's how I said it in a way that's not like, yeah. I know you're my husband. And I just have a vision of like building a house together. I lay one brick and then she lays another brick and then another one and, another, and we build together. But if I'm laying all the bricks on my side and she's not laying any bricks or vice versa, eventually it's gonna tip over. And that's the vision I feel God has given me right now in your pursuit uh, for your spouse is are you building your house, your relationship together? And it takes one brick from you and one brick from them to build. Okay, so we did have a few more questions, but they weren't related to marriage and relationships. So I'm gonna save them for a different video. And also because some of them were like, it's gonna be a lot to unpack mm -hmm. and it will take this video in a whole different direction. So yeah, so we have different journeys. So don't get caught up too much if you're, if you're, you're looking for an answer and it's not the ones we gave today, uh, because God knows where you are and what you're going through right now. So it's gonna be all good, it's all good. So that's it for this video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, for liking this video, for subscribing to my channel. It really, really helps me out. And again, I'm a Christian life coach for women. So if you're interested in working together, then please contact me and I really look forward to hearing from you. And if you feel led to support me on Patreon, I will put the links for that as well. See you guys. See you guys.